countries that are getting attention. One of the strategies that are getting attention in the last years is the uh, attention of uh, new hybrid uh, wheat cultivars. Uh, this, uh, the hybrid breeding uh, has a characteristic that can uh, increase yield up to 20% and also enhance biotic and abiotic stresses and also uh, yield stability in different uh, environmental conditions. Uh, however, there is a, a, the most important problem for uh, obtaining this wheat, uh, hybrid wheat is the low crop cost pollination ability of, of uh, wheat, and thus the high cost for seed production. Uh, also, the genetic resources that are uh, available now uh, for pollinators are very limited, and new studies are necessary to get this new. Uh, hybrid breeding varieties. Up to now, some reports using GWAS analysis and biparental population detect some effects of RRT in some uh, traits with uh, important as uh, for this hybrid breeding as antistrusion. However, the effect of different alleles cannot be the studied so far. So that was one of our uh, objectives. Uh, so, in this project, we propose to evaluate different uh, RXT alleles using near such genetic lines. For that purpose, uh, we conducted an uh, experiment in IPK Carter 7 during three years and in the National University of La Plata in Argentina during 2021. We evaluate uh, six near in such lines in four backgrounds, April Verdi, Bercy, Barry Kuzman, and Barry Whitcomb that are winter wheat. And we evaluate different degrees of dwarfing. Uh, first, the wild type, the uh, tall one. The most popular ones are the RRT1 and the RRT2, the semi-dwarfing alleles. And some combinations, uh, one plus two, also semi-dwarf. RST3, as is a dwarf, uh, a string dwarf allele, and also RST2 uh, plus 3. Also, we evaluate the effect of uh, another RST, RST12, uh, in, uh, that is a string dwarf, and the, uh, uh, the tall, also the tall allele in three genotypes, uh, in three backgrounds. The Sostaya, Mercia, and Maris Hutman. The plot size that we used was 1.2 square meters using six rows. And in Argentina, we use a different uh, method for sowing due to the requirements of the realization requirements that we need in Argentina for uh, uh, winter wheat. So we use the seed step method. And uh, we run three reps and also the, the we use a random and complete block design for, for the trials. Some photo here in, in IPK of the, our trials. Uh, some, it's not clear here, but you can see here differences between uh, a tall allele and a dwarfing one. And here is the seed, me uh, seed tape method that we use in Argentina because the vernalization was required. Regarding the evaluation, we evaluate some tra floral traits with relevance for uh, pollinator traits, flowering date, plant height, spike per spike, and spike length. The under extrusion that it was evaluating uh, seven days after flowering in five spikes per, per crop. And it's calculated by counting the, those uh, anthers that are retained uh, inside the, the, the spike lens. Also, anther length and anther filament length were recorded uh, using a microscope that it was equipped by the digital camera. Uh, and using the image analyzer included in the microscope, we analyzed the, 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 the length of both parameters. Uh, as harvest, we evaluate also yield and its components, uh, spike per square meter, grains per spike, grains per square meter. And spike fertility, 
is calculated as a grain per spike. Uh, and the, the ratio between grain per spike and then the spike chaff by weight. Also, with that, the, the grains that we obtain, we calculate some uh, grain morphology, morphology traits using the Marvin analyzer. So we calculate the uh, thousand kernel weight, kernel length, uh, width, and kernel area. Uh, here was some of the traits that we evaluate uh, and, um, flowering and restriction, counting the retained uh, uh, hunters inside the birds, under length and under filament length that were recorded with using the microscope. And for grain morphology, we use the Marvin uh, data analyzer, the seed analyzer. Okay. Some of the results that we obtain. For instance, uh, grand height, this is a mean of all the genotypes, but you can see here the effect of the dwarfing, uh, uh, effect of the real RHT alleles uh, compared to the wild type tall as a mean. You can say that the semi dwarfing alleles reduce up to 23% of plant height, and we obtain reduction between uh, 50 percent to up to 63 percent for the stream dwarfing uh, alleles. This response is due to the reduction in internal length uh, due to the in decrease in the sensitivity to plant tissue to gerberine acid. All, of course, this effect of dwarfing genes also affect uh, the anther lens and anther filament lens. Both parameters are very important for hybrid seed production because they are uh, correlated, uh, positively correlated with the ability of the plant to do a uh, corresponding relation between plants. So both parameters were reduced compared to the wild type. A reduction up to 19% were reported for the stream dwarf, dwarf in alleles. And for uh, under filament lens, that, those uh, reductions were up to uh, 31% compared to the RST allele. Again, the, the more extreme the, the dwarfing, the more extreme the, the reduction in, in these parameters. Here is the genotype per allele interaction. So in all the genotypes evaluated, we have the near saturating lines, and we can see that the Compared to the tall in orange, all the in, in all the cases, the dwarfing severe dwarf alleles generate a, a more important reduction in these parameters. For antifilament length, it was the same pattern. Compared to the tall in all the cases, not always significant uh, uh, between uh, alleles. Uh, important reduction were detected for antifilament length. Uh, regarding the, the, the alleles uh, evaluated. This is a more graphical photo that we take from the microscope. Here we compare the wild type and the stream dwarf alleles in, in the four genotypes evaluated. So it's clear that for under length and under filament length, there was an important uh, reduction in both parameters. Uh, for all the genotypes evaluated. Here, maybe it's not so clear due to the, the light, but we can see that response. Of course, uh, th those effects, uh, the effect that we reported previously in under filament length also affect later the capacity of the plant for extrude the anthers uh, outside the flower. So, uh, reductions were reported. This is the mean of uh, all the alleles, all the genotypes. But the important reduction were reported uh, when we compare the tall genotype with the stream dwarf uh, uh, um, alleles. Uh, there was also, here is the allele per genotype interaction. We can see the same response. Uh, and in the case of RHT12 and RHT. Uh, both uh, both alleles. Maybe the difference would be due to the different uh, genotypes that were evaluated, because there are important genotypic uh, variation, uh, and it could be that the, the reason. 
other of the traits for important as pollinator uh, for pollina pollination traits at date flowering. Uh, no important differences were detected among the alleles. Uh, as an exception, RRT12, the stained dwarf allele, delay flowering by three or four days. Uh, and this was already documented in, in, by other authors. Uh, uh, also, the dwarfing alleles um, have a tendency to uh, increase the spike that's per spike and also the spike length compared to the soil wild type. And again, these differences, low values in RRT12, could be due to the different, uh, the different uh, genetic background that we evaluate. So uh, to sum up, we, this first result showed that there is an important uh, response of RRT alleles in pollinator traits that are for interest for hybrid wood production, like plant height and transfusion anterior and anterior lens, and also a spiglet lens and spiglet per spike. So as an idiotype, the breeders suggest that the male parents should be taller than the females, show high end restriction, and contain large antennas uh, with abund abundant pollen. So uh, uh, this is because uh, there are uh, strong correlation between the pollen mass and the land restriction and also anthrene and plant height. The, the, for the part, the, the fact that we reported for the steam dwarf alleles, uh, showing reduction in all the parameters, could be a consequence of the DELA proteins that act as growth repressor, they are re regulating the genetic acid uh, regulation, and affecting cell expansion and uh, uh, also other biological processes. I will also uh, show some uh, values of in green yield and green morphology that you will obtain. So as also as a general trend, we can see that compared to the RST soil wild type, both RST1 and RST2 that were the, the first RST at least introduced in the germ in the in, in, uh, in breeding programs worldwide, present uh, an increase in the spike per square meter, also uh, in grains per spike, and also an increase in the spike fertility index. These responses have been already reported by other authors, and this is, could be this response is due to a greater proportion uh, of assimilates that they are allocated to the to the reproductive uh, tissues. Uh, that improve the fertility index and also the grain per spike. So we, we have the dwarfing genes generate a reduction in the vegetative growth or a less proportion of vegetative growth and enhance the harvest index. This enhance also generate an increase in the grain number per square meter, but in compensation there was a reduction in the southern kernel weight. Uh, regarding grain yield for this RRT1 and RRT2, the increase in grain number was sufficient to compensate just that reduction in southern kernel weight and resulted in higher yield compared to the, uh, to the wild type. In case of the string dwarf genotypes, uh, due to the a lower uh, biomass accumulation, uh, the the yield was re reduced, uh, also explained by a reduced inter light intercept interception and radiation, re radiation use efficiency. Regarding the grain morphology traits, uh, we evaluate using the Marvin. Uh, this is the effect on thousand color weight. So compared to the RST toll, again, the string dwarf show reduction, reduction up to 27% in uh, southern kernel weight, up to 15% in kernel area, and up to 11% in uh, kernel weight. This is a more, more graphical example for the, this cultivar Maris Kuzman. 
This is the difference among all the eight alleles evaluated. So we can see, compared with the tall allele, we can see also here the, the differences. The, the highest the level of the dwarfing, the higher the reduction in, in southern kernel weight and also in kernel area. So in this photo, we have 10 grains in horizontal and also in vertical. So it's clear the effect of these genes uh, in these parameters, for example. Also, this, the, the same trend was detected for the stream dwarf RHC12 compared to the tall, uh, to the tall uh, allele in the three genotypes evaluated. So reduction up to 15% were reported for thousand kernel weight in this genotype, but up to 41% in Marie Kuzman due to the effect of the stream dwarf allele that also affect the kernel area and the, the, and the kernel uh, width. This is important because uh, effects on uh, a reduced uh, thousand kernel weight and kernel area are uh, correlated with uh, poor seedling emergency under uh, stress conditions, for example, and also poor quality for meaning and for flowers. So there are important traits. So to summarize, uh, we this stock we reported the effect of these RHT alleles using uh, near saturated lines in some pollinator traits and some environmental traits. The this for, for pollinator traits that are for interest for hybrid wheat production. Reduction up to 48% were detected for anther extrusion, up to 19% for anther length, up to 31% of anther filament length, and up to 66% for tranchite. This is more, more important in the stream working analysis, uh, RHT2 plus 3 and RHT12. In contrast, for the wild type, we uh, the wild they present the, the, the more positive effect on these on this variables at the extrusion, anther length, and anther filament length. So, this, this effect are very beneficial for hybrid breeding programs because they enhance the cost pollination ratio for male, for male parents, for example. Uh, for green yield, uh, we reported the compensation between yield components. That was sufficient to, for increasing the green yield compared to the RHT allele, but it was only uh, this compensation was only verified for RHT1 and RHT2. Uh, for green, and from green morphology trait, as I repeated in the, in the previous uh, slide, uh, these um, traits will also affected by the level of dwarfing that we analyze. Uh, and the effect of uh, reduction in these parameters are related to, to poor civil emergency under adaptive stress and also lo a lower milling performance uh, for flowers, of, of obtaining flowers and uh, other sub products. So, our results uh, we think that uh, are for utility or the uh, a first study. Showing the utility of the uh, RIT genetic resources to design su superior hybrid for breeding programs. So, to finalize, uh, I want to thank again the organization of this event to Dr. Salam. Thank you very much for the kind invitation to show these first results. Uh, I want to thank again uh, 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 the planters and was. Uh, Technical assistant in IPK Gatters level, Dr. Maria Rosa Simon from Argentina, and Dr. Andreas Warner, who is my advisor here in, in Germany. Uh, the IPK and Alexander von Humboldt was involved in this project in Germany. And in La Plata, uh, we have the National University of La Plata, the Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry Science, and the College. Many thanks for your attention. And thank you, Marcus, for the nice presentation and now it's time for discussion.
you have any questions. Uh, well, uh, I would like to ask uh, behind you uh, production in uh, need per se. Yeah. Uh, no, Important. Important. Yeah. Because, uh, is, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Nowadays is more or less one percent of the total yield, total volume of yield worldwide. This is playing by hybrid, uh, hybrid breed. Yes. And this is getting attention in Europe, in several breeders that they are dealing with this. Uh, Problem with the self pollination. They have several techniques, not not only chemical techniques, also some uh, gen, uh, using genomic. Uh, yeah. You are using uh, psychotherapy uh, stability. Or? That's one of the old. Uh, now with are new techniques to uh, to uh, chemical, uh, chemical agents for yeah uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, agents, yeah uh, yeah. Every breeder has di a different, uh, has developed a different technique, and, but they are in, the, in, the, in development because it's very expensive to also to uh, for the program for the breeding programs to to evaluate the current quantity of uh, genotypes and but it's gaining attention worldwide for sure. This to flowering. I uh, Sadok 61. When we we had the first uh, anthers, uh, we can see the first anthers in the in the in the in the, in the field in the plot. Yeah, yeah. Anthesis. Yeah, yeah. Anthesis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we're talking in my presentation was the days to flower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. In the green, yeah, yes, I know. In the merry stems. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I was talking about days to flowering. So, yeah. Days to antithesis. Yes. So, the, from the day that we harvest, or we can do also calculate it from the first of January. Also, they calculate in Europe. Could be calculation. Yeah. 